glad to have this widely followed returning guest, Bill Holter, the founder of BillHolter.com and also an experienced uh, manager from Wall Street and a bullion dealer and a study of student of all the markets and analyst of all the markets is here with us this. Good to be back, Dunnigan. As always, before your arrival here, we have a plethora of questions that have been submitted and uh, we're going to get to those in just a few minutes. So thank you viewers for submitting those questions and thank you also viewers for pushing us over the 100,000 subscriber uh, limit on YouTube. That's awesome. They sent us this plaque to commemorate that and uh, we're grateful for everyone. If you haven't subscribed, for goodness sakes, click the subscribe button and, and let's keep going on that. But Bill, our viewers look to you for experience judgment on what's going on uh, in many arenas, including geopolitically and in the metals markets and the financial markets. Right now, they're wondering, a lot of people who are calling us are wondering why we're seeing such a pause in the momentum that had started in sec late second quarter in gold and silver. Uh, your observations of that, why gold and silver seem to be taking a break? Yeah, before I get to that question, I just want to say they gave you a plaque probably right before they take you down for saying something not correct, not politically correct. Anyway, as far as the metals are concerned, they broke out. Uh, I put an article out on May 11th. Silver, we got to 2450 on gold. Uh, they were both severely overbought and were overbought for a fair amount of time. So those gains uh, were naturally going to be digested. And of course, you've got the powers that be that don't want higher gold, don't want higher silver prices because they're direct competition to fiat. Uh, I think it was last Friday, um, there was basically the the amount of uh, silver that's mined in a year's time, that was equal to the uh, amount of trading that was done on Comex on Friday. So, I mean, it was, they've, they smashed this with paper again. Um, I did put an article up, uh, I believe it was Sunday or Monday, uh, with the same charts. We're, no, we're definitely no longer overbought. Uh, we're closer to oversold than overbought. Uh, silver, well, first we'll start with gold. Gold has pulled back to this 2280, 2300 level. Um, so we had a, you know, we've had a pullback there. Silver has pulled back. I think it got down as low as 2875, 2880, something like that. And on the chart that I showed, um, there's definitely support at, at uh, the 2850, 29 level. And there's a moving average that's right here at 29. And if you look at uh, what I talked about in the first, uh, the first article, the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, has, has you know, declined. Uh, and at this point, fairly close to forming another hook to, the up, to turning to the upside. Um, so silver pulling back to 29 is absolutely where you should have thought that it would pull back. I mean, nothing goes straight up. Nothing will go straight up until we have a revaluation. Then it'll be like a light switch and poof, you'll have, you'll have new prices that are totally unrecognizable. Um, on this move, uh, on, on the next move higher, and I think the next move higher, uh, you could, you could see it. Uh, beginning immediately, I think we're in the bottoming. We're, we're digging on that twenty-nine dollar level as we speak. Um, I think this is going to bring us probably to the thirty-four to thirty-seven level. We'll be overbought, and you'll see another pullback. And then I believe that thirty-two fifty, uh, the previous high or you know thirty-two range, will uh, again be the the support. So this is uh, it's totally natural. Anybody who was disappointed that gold or silver didn't keep going once it hit 32, 32, 50, um, you don't understand how markets, you know, normal markets work. And these are not normal markets. Um, but when you get as severely overbought as we were, you're going to get a pullback. And we have had that. You know, it's interesting because 
people who've been around any market for a while know that that does happen. And I had several fairly experienced clients who had been waiting for a significant pullback in the metals to to make another entry point. They were caught off guard by the move up in late second quarter, and they said, "Well, is there going to be another uh, pullback?" And we said. My answer is there's always going to be a pullback. The thing that's hard to know is from what level and to what level, because uh, we can certainly, as you point out, there will certainly come a day when uh, things move far enough that so-called pullbacks that will happen uh, won't be to levels that would be attractive in, in their old way of thinking. So it's it's a uh, there's a lot less hair pulling going on by those who are just methodically making regular uh, purchases and cost averaging in, uh, rather than those that are trying to time bottoms and tops. Um, but you, you, I have to give you credit because we even talked about your uh, your communication that you had sent out prior to that breakout about everything seeming lined up uh, for the breakout in both gold and silver, and you called it spot on to within a day or so of when when things really got moving in late second quarter. Um, we've got another question here from a viewer, and I think there might be some confusion uh, here that we should dispel about the difference between modern, the clad uh, coins, dimes, quarters, half dollars that people have in their pockets uh, versus paper dollars, and the distinction between all of those having no intrinsic value versus silver coins, for example, having intrinsic value or old gold coins. Uh, Omega Woman 42 says, uh, this could come very, at a very important time, Bill, in the repricing of U.S. currency. What happens to the coinage? Will it matter that the Fed is responsible for the paper and the Treasury provides us with the coinage? I haven't heard any of the opinion makers talk about this, probably because it would cause a run on the coins? Question mark. Yeah, uh, current coinage is uh, it's it's worthless, basically. I mean, yeah, nickel's got value, and, and nickel might be a nickel. I don't even know where it is now, but it might be worth six or seven cents, who knows, uh, but who cares? What's going to have value when all this is said and done is not going to be dollars. It's not going to be current coinage. It's going to be what's what's real, what's inside the coin. And pre-1964 dimes and quarters are 90% silver. And that's what they're valued at is the silver value. So, I mean, don't uh, don't get caught up in worrying about, quote, nickels or dimes, current nickels or dimes, because that's what they are. They're nothings. Um, I mean, you could have uh, $1,000 worth of, of nickels or dimes, and it might be, it, it, it might, in the, in the terms of nickels, because of the nickel uh, that's in there, um, you know, like I said, it might be worth six or seven cents. So, but I mean, look at, look at a dime, a dime is worth, Two dollars, or a little more than two dollars at this point, uh, 1964. So, uh, your your true store of value and the way things will be bartered when the system goes down, the way you're going to pay a farmer is going to be dimes and quarters pre 19 or 64 and earlier. Yeah, that's it's one of the most um, confusing uh, topics to come up. When talking with newbies who have not yet gotten their arms around the difference between fiat currency and real money, gold and silver, when they say, why, why do I have to pay $2 or more than $2 for a, a dime? And once they grasp that the dime hasn't changed, it still, it still can buy the same amount of goods that it could buy back in the 1960s, the 1950s or whatever, then they start to realize, oh my gosh, there that we've all been brainwashed to to think about the dollar as a standard whereas it's not it's it's absolutely not where the the silver is the standard